Thank you, Greg. Starting on the pole of heat race number one from Hamilton. In the number 12, it will be Chantel Hyatt. On her outside from Hamilton, the 17, Mike Taylor. Her number two on the inside from Wellenport, the Simington Auto Arclo Acres Regnac Trucking 84 for Jade Peltier. Row two on the outside from Hamilton, the Messengers Affordable Fire, Fire Protection 96 of Brian Crosgrove. Row three on the inside from Dundas, it's the Fireball 5 Lettering, Bob's Lawn Care, Mason Athletics 69 for Rob Twitchett. On his outside from Dunville, the Intercounty Concrete, Northern Foam Tech, Heart Hill Barn Builders, number 90 for Chad Smelzer. And row number four on the inside from Caledonia, the NRG Automotive, number 11 is Mike Iverson. On his outside from Paris, the 79, Steve Miller. So here we go with heat race number one of four. The top five will transfer out of this heat race directly into the feature. And here we go with heat race number one. So Mike Taylor and Brian Crosgrove dive it down into turn one and two the first time. Crosgrove comes out with the lead. And keep an eye on Steve Miller. has already made up a couple of spots and looking for more after he started on the tail. So Crosgrove will come around and get the lead of lap number one. Taylor is second. Troubles for Twitchin in the 69 as he pulls it into the infield. He had all kinds of trouble getting that car even ready to go this week. And now contact between Peltier and Steve Miller. Oh. And... Man, Chantel Hyatt had nowhere to go and hit the passenger door of the pinball. Mike Guyberson in corner two. Significant damage to both cars. And Crosgrove rides the wall. That's why we ask you to stay away from the fence, folks, right there. I heard enough hit on the passenger side door that the driver side door panel came off the 11 of Mike Guyberson. And now Crosgrove was the leader. He pulls it up on the outside of turn number two. So the first qualifying heat full of calamity, the front of the pack, mid middle of the pack. We had the full moon last week, right, Tom? I thought so. There goes Twitchett. He's running on fewer than four cylinders for sure. So Chantel Hyatt appears she's going to keep on going here with that car. We'll see how much damage is on the 12 and we'll just take a look make sure there's no fluids coming out of the front end that was a pretty solid hit on the 12. so we'll restack the field hyatt starting third, then Miller fourth, and Pelche will continue on in fifth, so all five cars will transfer. So Mike Taylor's got the lead now in the 17. Schmelzer is second. Hyatt looks like just cosmetic damage on the 12 so far as she continues to ride around out there. Halfway now, three laps in and three to go. So Taylor stretching the advantage over Chad Smelzer. Miller sitting right now in the third spot with a good run down the back stretch. He'll pull to the inside of Smelzer. That car top five in the standings coming into tonight. Yeah, Steve's had a good consistent season so far. It came from the B main last week to get up into the top 10 in the feature. And uh, he started on the tail of this one and was on the move even before the attrition in, the, in this race. Now he's up to second trying to chase down Taylor. So this time by we should see the white flag from starter Dale Shuneman and we will. White flag is out. One more trip around the speedway for Mike Taylor. Miller in second. Smells are in third. Hyatt doing a nice job with that uh, car a little bit askew on the front end. The 12th and then Jay Pelche running in the fifth spot. Half a lap to go for Taylor. Miller is closing the gap but running out of time. Yeah, one more set of corners left to go here, and Miller's got the 79 wound up, but Taylor is going to come around and get the heat race win. Second will be Miller, third is Smelzer, fourth is Hyatt, and fifth will be Peltier. So that'll send Guyberson, Twitchett, and Crosgrove to the B main if they can get their cars repaired. Bob Slater. 
So heat race number two paces through corners three and four. Again, as we mentioned, the top five will transfer directly to the feature race. Everybody will have to run the B main if they do not transfer. Well, here we go. Alrighty, Brian Watson on the move in the 43 as Lubin did not go going on the start. Three wide there through one and two already as they whip it down out of turn two. Getting really racy. Yeah, four wide now at the front with Erskine poking the nose of the 69 out front. Here comes Reichman in the 93. Watson still down low and again they're four wide out of turn four. Amazing heat races here tonight as they work it into turns one and two. They work it here off of the third, second turn. Look at them, three wide again. This fast car, slow car heats produces some great racing. And again, three wide in corner three and four. Reichman down to the bottom now. Watson has moved up to the middle. And now Erskine will fall back. Slater up in the mix in the 55 after he started on the tail. Reichman here on the bottom in the 93 with a good run off the bottom of turn two. Slater now coming around the outside of the board two. But Watson's really got the run on the high side into three. Reichman has the lead. Watson is second. Here comes Newell in the number two as he tries to get to the inside of Slater. Now almost contact with the wall was the 55 of Slater there. Not a great start to the night for Lucas Lubin as the 29 limps into the pits. And Reichman leading Watson here down the back straightaway. Slater trying to get the outside of DeBoer and Erskine on the bottom of the 69 is the leader. Tiptoes off the bottom of four. So right now it's Slater in the 55 with the final transfer as we have two laps left to go. Now Erskine into the final transfer spot as Slater moves up. Ayrton is the first car on the outside looking in. He's running a good line though. Just has to keep it steady. Hope for some issues with one of these other guys as they bring it off of four. Reichman here, once again, smooth and steady, but Watson holding it up on the top side. So Reichman on the inside, the 43 of Watson is right there now after he got another top 10 finish last week. And now he gets to the outside. Someone's gonna get this heat race win. Will it be Reichman or Watson? Watson's got the outside line working for him as the white flag. Comes down for the lap car. The checkers will go to Watson. And he'll get Reichman at the line. DeBoer, Slater, and Erskine will qualify. So he raced. Number two on the inside from Brantford, the oil changers. Number one is Kathy Dickey. On her outside from Oakland, the Middleport Mechanical Fence and Deck Perfection 81 of Alex Schutz. For number three on the inside from Caledonia, last week's feature winner on the Starlight Engraving Keyware Events BAS Contracting Window Works 21 Axis Mark Design. And also out there, the 76 from London, the Chris Casares Auto Repair Image Factor on Dirt Racing News 76 is Jamie Gooch. From Brantford, the Brown Auto Service Action Hand Car Ross Minuteman Press 05 for Dave Goodacre. And from Hagersville, the Highland Tires Antast Ancaster Foot Clinic number 7 for Jason Langero. Again, the top five will transfer from heat race number 3. They bring it here off the fourth turn, nice and steady. Robin Elliott going to try and hang with the leader here. Jansen says they get off in the one. But Dickey has been very quick in the number one. Tommy, let's not forget, keeping the right front on the Neons has been a problem for about the last three weeks. Yeah, definitely. So we'll keep an eye on the 81 of Alex Schutz. And I made a mistake in the lineup. It's the 22 of Brittany Myers out there. We'll see Bazain in the 21X coming out later. Right now it's the 66 of Brandon Jansen up front. Brandon Jansen with a very fast car to the outside of the first turn. Leading it up, right up on the rim. Dickey at the number one, holds on to second. This is her rookie year in the mini stocks and here comes around the outside. It is Robin Elliott in the 99, but Schutz is always fast in the 81. Schutz trying to get around the 99 of Robin Elliott right now, can't do it so far. And so that's got Schutz again on the inside. Brandon Jansen's out front, then Dickey, then Elliott. Shots and Laguerre on the final transfer with Dave Goodacre going after him. Jansen's up on the top side, out of turn four, working the 66 car. 
Nice and smooth to Dale Shuneman's halfway point into the high side and one. Keeping it straight and steady and making power. So Dickey still has the second spot, but Elliott gets a good run out of corner two and now draws up to the outside heading into turn three. He's going to try to bring Alex Schutz with him. But Dickey gets a good run out of corner four and she will hold the second spot for now. Two laps left to go. Elliott on the outside of Kathy Dickey's number one. He's working that gray machine up to the top side just like the leader Brandon Jansen's. Shots fading back now in the 81 a little bit, but Longero not close enough to pounce. So Jansen's comes around and gets the white flag. Dickey is still second, but Elliott again with a run down the front stretch. Now he'll try to dive it to the inside in corner two. Slide job, and Elliott has the spot for the moment, but Dickey now tries to cross over. Dickey thought about coming back to the bottom, wasn't far enough on the inside. Now she'll put it down low on Elliott as they're making gains on the leader, but he will win it. Jansen's in the 66, Elliott the 99, then Dickey in the one. Shots and Longero will qualify. So fourth and final heat race coming out for the HRW Automotive Mini Stock starting on the pole from Don Row number two on the inside. Now we see the 21X from Caledonia, the Starlight Engraving. K-Ware Events, BAS Contracting, Window Wux car for Mark Bazine. He is last week's feature winner. On his outside from Welland, your points leader in the Highway Farm CSL Auto Wreckers, CarQuest 96T for Tyler LaFantasi. Row number three on the inside from St. Catharines. In the number four, it's Jason Katu on his outside from Mount Hope, the 43 of Kyle Newell. Also out there, he's got a feature win earlier this year from Welland. It's the 114 of Kyle Rothwell. And also out there making his first start of the year, the 2X of Rick Schwarzenberg. And taking the tail of the field, the 14 of Shane Dixon. Fourth and final qualifying heat for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. And they'll fan out three wide down in corner number one. Bazine will pick up right where he left off last Friday night. Hills up on the outside, but Katu has been fast in this form of Rocco Conti. Number four, but you can't count out the 96 of Tyler LaFontaise. Wow, he got pinched off there going into corner number three. Got on the binders is the 96 T of Tyler LaFontaise, but he's right there in the mix. Katu in the floor right in front of him. Jason Katu picking up his game weekly here at the local tracks in Niagara, spending a bit of time here. And he's running very good on the inside here of Bazine. Here comes Jansen's in that 66 in the middle groove, trying to shoot through the leaders, Katu and Bazine. Bazine gathers up the back end of the 21X. What a race we've got at the front here in this fourth and final qualifying heat. Katu running very well in this car. That won many championships with Rocco Conte behind the wheel. And LaFontaise, kind of surprised a lot of people this year, wasn't planning to race here on a weekly basis, having so much fun. Now Rothwell's coming along with them, and that 114 can win races too. Here comes Jansen's in the 66, looking to the outside of Katu in the four. Meanwhile, it's side by side between first and second in the points, Bazine in the 21X and the 96T of Tyler LaFontaise. His racing buddy Rothwell trying to come around the outside of Hills for the fifth position and put Hills into the B main. As they come back to one, Rothwell gets low on the TC deck. It was 114. He, whoa, nearly gets around a one and two with a bid. Save there to avoid the 66, Greg. What happened there? I missed it. It's right out of my vantage point here in the tower, so I missed the spin there by the 66. We'll see if he can keep it going. Nonetheless, the white flag is out for Katu. And the battle continues between LaFontaise in the 96-team and the 21-X of Mark Bazine. Mark Bazine showed last week he can get up there and battle with the likes of LaFontaise and the rest of them. Katu looks like he's on a rail tonight here in the Seminox SO number four. So the checkers coming out for Jason Katu. Mark Bazine will grab second. Tyler LaFontaise third. Then it's Rothwell and Hills rounding out the top five. So that concludes qualifying for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. Again, if you're new to the Speedway, five different divisions in total. Mini Stocks are our four-cylinder division. Those were their qualifying heats. So 
13 cars are starting this one. And looks like we have a new entry in the 1X car. We'll get a name on that one. So again, Brian Crosgrove and Rob Twitchett on the front row. Then it's Mike Guyverson and Jonathan Ayrton, row two. Row three, Brittany Myers and Lucas Lubin. Row four, Dave Goodacre, Jamie Gooch. Row five, Kyle Newell in the 43. And we'll get a name for you on the 1X. Then it's the 14 of Shane Dixon and the nine of Arnie DeBoer. 50-50 now at $650. So that's the latest update there. 650 in the 50-50. Coming to the green flag, the last chance dance, the B main, the Concy, whatever you want to call it for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. Rob Twitchett leads them down into corner one. They're four wide. And now the 2X of Schwarzenberg has joined the field. We don't see the 66 of John Jansen's up front. It's three wide for the lead and three wide for fourth. Yeah, you got the 0-5, Dave Goodacre on the bottom side. Brittany Myers in the 22 in the middle. Jonathan Ayrton on the outside. Rob Twitchett to the far outside goes four wide through the corner. Crossgrove's got the lead, second is Goodacre. And then behind them, it's four cars going at it for that final transfer spot. Only two are gonna get one. Feel bad for Rob Twitchett in the 69. You see him waving his arm, trying to signify to the drivers that uh, he is pulling off the track and he's had a rough week getting that car back together and going. So the Gremlins still getting the 69 of Rob Twitchett. Shane Dixon has made up a few spots in the 14 already, has started on the tail in that car. But he is outside a transfer spot up front. It's Goodacre and Crosgrove going at it for the lead. Goodacre, another one of those drivers that runs Fridays here on the dirt. Saturday nights up at the Flamborough Speedway on the asphalt. It's got two different cars to compete. And he is the leader off of corner number four. Crosgrove in second. So Goodacre still got the lead. Second now, we're still looking for the name on the 1X. Volkswagen ride out there. Going at it with Crosgrove for that spot. Now Crosgrove gets a good run on Goodacre. So this time by, we will see the two to go signal for Dave Goodacre. Crosgrove in second. And John Smith running in third in the one. I, we don't have a name on the one just yet. We apologize for that. Well, I'm going to guess from the look of the car that it has something to do with the yeah, oh, I was going to say yeah, okay. it, it might have been one of the Goulding cars, and it is Rob Goulding in the 1X. And white flag out three wide for the lead now between Goodacre, Crossgrove, and Goulding. So they continue at it through corner number two. Dave Goodacre is your leader. Crossgrove on the top side, Goulding on the bottom. Coming to the checkered flag, half a lap to go. Goodacre to the inside, Crossgrove to the outside. Here comes Goulding even lower in the 1X. He might steal the win away here. No, it will be the 96 of Crossgrove, then almost a dead heat for second. And we'll confirm who got the final transfer spot there. So it's sounding like it was Crossgrove, then Goulding, then Goodacre, and then Lubin. Is that correct? Yeah, I was just looking at the score of sheets, and that's what they have written, 29 in the fourth and final transfer spot. All the rest of the drivers will be done for the evening. Of many stocks. Again, your points leader in the 96T, Tyler LaFantese, will start on the outside of row number nine. On his inside, last week's feature winner, the 21X of Mark Bazine. Those are the cars to watch in this one. White flag out this time by. Give these drivers a wave as they come by. The mini stock drivers of the HRW Automotive Division. What a great field of cars we've got here this evening. As we get set to roll. Should be an exciting one here. The point battles are heating up as we get towards the midpoint of the season. A lot of the drivers have shown us they can get it done. A few of them at the back expecting to be fast tonight. Green is out and here we go on the mini stocks. They're slipping and sliding. And still a bit of a slick surface out there. We'll get this track run in.
Everybody trying to find their way through the wet stuff here. Dan Erskine in the 69 and Jane Pelty in the 84 get spun around. And yellow flag will come out. All right, we're ready to go again. 15 to go, we'll see if they take a different course into one this time. They've seen it now, they know what they have to deal with. We'll watch how they handle this one. Miller on the inside, Taylor up on the outside. And they come around fairly slow here on the pace. Miller and Taylor. So here we go, green flag out, 15 laps the distance and everybody was going to have a good start there but Chris Reichman gets spun around in the 93. Onto the back shoot, Watson with the lead here. He's got the position over Taylor and Reichman down on the inside. Still a lot of competitive cars here ready to go in this one. Longaro making his way back out of the pits. We get the word that the lineup is good. Going white this time. Back to it we will go. Or at least try to get it going here, Tommy. No laps in the books, 15 scheduled to come here. Longaro, after service in the pits, flies back out. Took them a couple of laps to get the lineup, and we're ready to go. So Steve Miller and Mike Taylor make up the front row. Brian Watson and Chad Smelzer, row two. Brandon Jansen's Kyle Newell, row three. Sorry, that's Matt Newell in the number two. Then Kathy Dickey, Rob Slater in row four. Last week's winner, Mark Bazine, now up into the fifth row with Robin Elliott on the outside. Here we go. Again, 15 laps the distance in the mini stock feature. Green is out for the third time here. Watson to the inside of one. And he'll try it on steady. Kathy Dickey with the advantage here down low in the number one car. What she has going for her, Tommy, is this quick track is going to prevent the front from popping up, I would think. Trouble for Newell in the number two. He falls back after getting sideways in corner two, but this time will stay green. Dickey to the inside of Watson now as those two fight it out for the lead. Watson in the 43. To the outside of turn one. Dickey on the make here in the number one. So Dickey still trying to get to the inside of Watson there at the front. Here comes Brandon Jansen's working on third on Chad Smelzer. Behind them last week's feature winner, Bazine now up to the fifth spot. They work it here off the four. Heavy contact back in the pass. As they get around. Taylor. Yeah, they get around in three and four there, Tommy. Sorry. Yeah, Taylor and Newell with heavy contact there in turn three. An exhaust pipe on the back stretch, too. Up the front row. Those two were side by side for the lead before the yellow flag. Brandon Jansen's part of the Team 66 group that is currently up in the top five in the point standings. He will restart in the fourth spot with Chad Smelzer third. And Robin Elliott and Mark Bazine were two drivers on the move before this caution flag along with Jason Katu, who originally started 19th in this feature. He's up into the top 10 in the number four. All right, field. Coming up to speed here, Watson on the outside is the leader. He jumps, everybody else is free to pass. No chalk lines, no cones here in the mini stocks and the thunder stocks. It's go, go, go. So Watson's got the lead. Here comes Smelzer trying to get to the inside of Kathy Dickey for the second spot. No grip down there and that allows Robin Elliott and Brandon Jansen along with Jason Gattu to get by. So Elliott now up to third in the 99. Jason Katu, the guy on the move with Robin Elliott right in front of him as they come through there. Last week's feature winner, Bazine on the make as well. 
So Watson still has the lead right now. He's had a couple top 10 finishes this year, including last week, and he is looking strong out there right now with Dickey giving chase. Then it's Elliott behind them with Jason Katu, Brandon Jansen's Mark Bazine, Alex Schutz all in this one. Smelzer walks it up the track a bit. You've got the inside move of Dickey. On the outside, Brian Watson in the a and Auto Parts 43X. Dickey will come through and assume the lead here off of turn two, and Katu is on the move as well. Katu got a heat race win earlier, trying to go for a feature win now after he got nipped just barely a few weeks ago by Kyle Rothwell for that win. Up front though, it's Kathy Dickey right now with Watson still second. Goulding into the side of Miller down the front straightaway. He'll bring Rothwell underneath him as they battle around 12th spot. Up front, it is Katu. Gets underneath Watson. Here comes Robin Elliott. Shot out of a gun in turn two. Elliott up there into battling for second now, but he slides up high in turn four. That'll open up the door for Jansen's. Now he didn't end up wrecking. Elliott or Watson is a miracle there. Jason Katu is on the move underneath Kathy Dickey. So here comes Katu to the inside of Dickey now looking for the lead. Dickey holding strong on the outside. Here comes Elliott and Jansen along with Bazine and a host of others back into this one. Kathy Dickey looking good here, but she really slows down into one, and Katu steers it to the inside corner, trying to make the pass out of turn two. Their door handle, the door handle. Now they have to work around the slower cars of Peltier and Chantal Hyatt. They will do that. Dickey holds the lead for now. Here comes Elliott to the outside of Katu, looking for the lead. Robin Elliott to the outside of Jason Katu. Elliott is using the outside lane to his advantage here and running so well as Dickey and Katu try and stay off each other on the bottom of two. Elliott has had troubles on that outside line a couple times getting up too high again. A little bit too hard into turn three and he falls back again. Here comes Katu to the inside on Dickey. Still gets a great run down the front straightaway. Just needs to back it down a hair and Elliott will have something for the top duo. Here comes Katu now. He gets to the inside of Dickey. They'll get the five to go this time by. And it's still Dickey out front. Here comes Elliott again to the outside. Just needs a little bit of grip on that outside and Elliott keeps it wound up. He comes around Katu with the strike. Now he looks at the backside of Kathy Dickey. But Dickey still holds the lead out there, running that middle groove. Here comes Elliott again with a better run into corner three this time. Nose is ahead in turn three now. Dickey with a good run on the bottom, though she'll hold the lead out of turn four. Elliott just over, drove it a little bit. Now Bazine with the slider right up in front of Elliott. Seeing what was working for the 99, and he'll try and steer to the outside. Now Dickey on the inside as Katu goes to the top. Yeah, Katu saw Robin Elliott get to the outside and make that work. And now he's trying to make it work as well as behind them, Elliott and Jansen's got together. He'll take the lead as he pins Dickey on the bottom. Bazine coming to the outside, wants to make it two in a row with three to go, Jason Katu leading. So Katu's got the lead now. Kyle Rothwell, who stole the win from him a few weeks ago, is nowhere in sight. So Katu tries to run off and hide here with two laps to go this time by. Katu underneath Hyatt comes down here onto the front straightaway. Double laps in the air for Jason Katu. Dickey trying to hold on to second, but Bazine and Elliott are there. Dickey blows the right foot again, Tommy. Another tough break for Dickey. A top five run is going south for her with a flat right front tire. That's what it looked like, confirm with me or not, but yes, the rim is definitely digging in, I believe. Yeah, she's having trouble getting through the rocks. White flag out now for kid two. And actually, Dickey does have all four tires still up on the number one. Just must be the rim digging the in. Suspension there. Yeah, but if the tire's a little bit soft, the rim will dig in and shoot up those rooster tails. Jason Katu around three and four. This car is a good one, and Katu, a good driver, off of turn four. Jason Katu wins the feature tonight in the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. Bazai falls one spot short of back-to-back -back feature wins at second. Dickey, Elliott, Lee Hills, and Brandon Jansen, your unofficial top five. Victory Lane will be held till the end of the next feature.
Victory Lane will come up after the next race as we work to keep the show moving along.